yeah. It, it comes yeah. to order and schedule. So, but it's also a mindset. I think uh, most people say I hate Mondays. So we have Monday blues, even a mental condition. I used to be the same until I decided Monday is my first favorite day of the week. To me now, and I and I, I, I went in and coached myself. And I keep telling people, I love Mondays. It's my first chance. I looked for a reason for actually having an awesome Monday. Say, it's my first chance to be awesome in the week. So I cannot let it go to waste. So one, it's a mindset. I am saying Monday is my, and I even, my team is infected. Happy Monday. I have energy and so on. It doesn't matter what happened on Sunday. Which means my Sundays have to be reconfigured so that I have a great Monday. You know, there is there's the reverse, right? But also, I think people want, we as humans, we are perfectionists. We want all or nothing. As someone say, I don't have time. And they say, do you have 30 minutes a day? That's the problem. You know, it, we all want intensity over long periods of planned time. I mean, it's, it's the atomic habits, you know, just have a small habit. Do it for 30 minutes a day. And once you do it for 30 minutes a day for 90 days, for is it 30, 45 days, it becomes a habit. Once it becomes a habit, layer something else over it because then you can do that. There are people with constraints, like you've said, bedtime, children, etc. I also keep telling people like constraints are awesome because they are, like you said, the children in the, in the field, they're actually points at which you say these are non-negotiable. And even your business, even your company etc., can accept, even your team, people are humans. They, they can sort of say this person has this constraint. So how can we support them? But that means you also have to earn that trust, which means, you know, most people say, I want to sleep in late, but I, I like, I want to have the best life, but not put in the work, you know? So you sort of have to do the same. I, you know, I, I stay, I stay, my, my commute is about 70 minutes into the city when I have to go into the city. That means the days I go into the city, I must ensure there is value for me going into the city. At times it's uh, because my wife does, you know, she's more flexible. So she does the commute into the city. And then there are days when she doesn't have to go. So I'm, I always try to figure out for the days that she doesn't have to go, are those the days where I can put these things that require me to go into the city? Which has a double, which has a double whammy effect in that, She's happy. She's not going on the days she doesn't have anything to do. But also, I mean, when I go, there is value to me having to go to the city, and it is tied in with a whole host of other things. So that mm. it's not just... So I think we always... We don't take the time to move things... It's not perfection, right? There's a bit of compromise, but you can also figure out a compromise that is a win-win-win situation. I think, you know, it's either, it's either this or that. And many times you actually find that this win-win doesn't work. Like this win, so that others, sorry, win that others lose doesn't work. We can all win. And if you have that attitude, it means you're looking for ways and there has to be some pain, right? That's the key. The, the question is, is it pain you can fathom or is it pain you can deal with? Like you, you have to, like you cannot have, like you said, you cannot have a completely free life full of pain and so on. Struggle is what, I mean, even muscles, even if you do sports and fitness, anytime you push the envelope, you're uncomfortable, you will have to push again at something. So I think it's also that thing of people expecting to live carefree lives, watching Netflix all day, eating all you want on a couch. Yeah, you can do it for like one, two days, but after a while, your brain starts going atrophying. So for me, who loves TV, I say Friday night is my binge night. Like uh, I think Mark Twain said, never trust a man without a vice. I have my own vices, but I structure them very well and say Friday night, I come home. If I have nothing to do on Saturday that requires my brain to be sharp, I am going to binge and sleep at 4 a.m. I will watch five hours of TV, compress all the TV I have I wanted in the week. But I'll also feel happy in that I have indulged. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, think, I have indulged, yeah. and and then that doesn't make it so bad. So even if I miss three weeks of binge nights, it is generally okay because there's and there's no way I could like if I look at it practically, there's no way I could fit it in. But I think people want no pain, they want no compromises on whatever schedule they've put in their mind. 
you know, I tell them, I tell people, may I love being an employee? They say, but what? Eight to five bosses. I tell them, guys, you've not worked for yourself. That slave master is the worst. You don't work eight to five. And some people say, I gave up my eight to five so that I could work from 7 to 10 p.m. with half the pay. <laughs> Not all of us are meant to be entrepreneurs and business owners. But when, when you're working for yourself, when you don't work, you don't eat. And any, you know, as an employee, I have time off. Like yesterday was a public holiday. I have time off. I have weekends off. You know, I can, you know, there are schedules. Once in a while I get in call, you know, I, you know, I have to do something after 7. But overall... It's eight to five, so I, which means I have to maximize what I do in that eight to five. But at times I add more hours because I have to be competitive in my organization. I have to drive value. I have to do research. I've made it my life so that I am excellent, so that I can push that envelope, which later will free up time, probably, but which will later, but if I find joy in the work that I do, I think that's the other thing many people don't want to do. You say, but my work is grant work. I have so many tickets, but where's the joy? You if you let if you let decisions be made for you, the day will run you. But what can you do to flip that around? It may take you six months to earn the trust, but you must, you know, you must push that envelope so that people are willing to give you an opportunity. You know, everybody, you know, everybody is everybody wants to give others an opportunity. I mean, there may be a few who don't, but overall, everybody wants others to get better. You know, so but I, you have to earn it. Like, yeah, I mean. Where am I? Because I mean, if you're going to invest time, resources, energy, and that opportunity you're going to get is at the expense of something else. So how do you make it that mm -hmm. it's valuable enough that somebody is willing to put off that something else for you? Everything's an opportunity yeah. cost. Somebody, you know, there's an opportunity cost, not a win-lose, but an opportunity cost. So how do you make sure that the value you're giving, like when somebody weighs, they say, ah, ah you know, working with Clayton is more important than me going for this thing I would enjoy or something of the sort. It's an opportunity cost and you figure out, but this, you know, this could be exciting. This could be interesting. You know, why not try that? 